I guess start us off, Em, you're going to talk a little bit about the uh, sib shops. And I know a lot of people were interested. I saw in the chat before about it, so. Great, yeah, I'll just, um, I'll just jump right in. Um, uh, if we could actually go to the next slide, that would be wonderful. Um, so thank you guys again so much. A little bit about the sibling support project. I'm sure that Don um, told you a little bit about the sibling support project when uh, he was introducing the panel. Um, Don is the founder of the sibling support project. He's a creator of sib shops. Many consider him to be the father of the sibling movement. Um, many of us, you know, consider ourselves co-presidents of the Don Meyer fan club. And so um, for me, it's really an honor to continue to do um, the important work uh, to support siblings that Don started almost 40 years ago with the very first sib shop. So a little bit about the sibling support project. Um, as Pana mentioned in the intro, we're the first national program in the US dedicated exclusively to supporting brothers and sisters of people with special developmental health and mental health concerns. And um, we, uh, we have a national presence. We are a proud program of Kindering, which is Washington State's uh, largest early intervention provider. And um, we are really proud that not only does our work span across the US in uh, every Canadian province, but also in about 18 countries around the world. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. We can go to the next slide. <clears throat> Thank you. So the Sibling Support Project, we do our work to support siblings of all ages kind of in, in, in two different ways. One is through education. And um, when I think about education, I think uh, not only about um, educating people um, who want to read our books and learn more specifically about sibling issues, but also promote awareness among the general population about why siblings are so important. Um, and I know that Don probably talked about that when he was introducing um, the panel. And so a lot of the work that I do is to um, really raise awareness of the important roles that siblings play in their families, in their communities, and um, why it's so important to be really, really inclusive when we use terms like family support to make sure that we are considering that siblings are a really important part of that family, right? When we think about our definition of family. So we offer um, books for uh, siblings of all ages. And I'm so proud of our books because they're not only written for siblings, they're written largely by siblings. Um, so a lot of sibling voices in here, the true experts on sibling issues are siblings themselves. Um, so you see some of our books there, uh, including Views from Our Shoes, which is a really nice collection of um, little essays by young, young siblings, um, all the way up to adult issues you can find in the Sibling Survival Guide, which is kind of our one-stop shop um, for adult siblings to reflect back upon common childhood experiences, to think about how being a sibling impacts your own career and choices you make in your own lives, and then also the really practical stuff um, how to navigate the service system and how to really be a support for your sibling and your family throughout the lifespan. Um, <clears throat> we also offer direct support to siblings of all ages. And um, I'll start with our social media groups. Uh, I'll save sib shops for last. Um, <clears throat> we offer three online communities for brothers and sisters of different ages. And you see that their names there, they exist on Facebook. They're currently closed uh, groups on Facebook. And all three of these communities are wonderfully warm, reflective places where siblings can gather to meet each other, to share stories, to share resources, um, uh, information, and also, I think most importantly, validation and support, right? I mean, siblings, you just, you, I always, Lindsay's heard me say this so many times, you put a bunch of siblings around a table and like magic is gonna happen. Like those stories just start flowing and um, those friendships are made so quickly. And so we really try to replicate this, this experience online through SibNet, which is our group for adult siblings. It's our largest and longest standing group. It's been around honestly for about as long as the internet has been. Um, SibTeen is our group for adolescent siblings. Um, and Sib20, as you can probably imagine, is for siblings in their 20s because you know the issues really do kind of evolve through the lifespan as I'm sure Don mentioned. So these three groups are really nice places for um, siblings of different ages to connect with each other and get all kinds of really great information and support. And then finally, even though it's at the top of the list, what we're probably best known for are sib shops. And I'm sure Don talked um, about sib shops 
during his part of the presentation as well. Um, we can go to the next slide and I can give you a little bit more information about SIB shops. Um, SIB shops are really our answer for the same kind of common sense peer support that parents of, uh, of individuals with disabilities receive from a good parent to parent program or a parent support group. Um, SIB shops are um, places where siblings, young school age siblings can receive information and support in a highly recreational setting. Um, we are unapologetically playful in SIB shops. The SIB shops really center around um, the first language that all of us learn, which is play, right? It's how we learn about ourselves and the world. And it really resonates with kids. When Don might have told the story, when he was researching sibling support models in the late 1970s and early 1980s, what he read about could be best described as kind of a support group, right? Little siblings sitting around in folding chairs with a therapist and a box of tissues. And that quite honestly didn't sound like that much fun to Don. Like he didn't really resonate with the 11 year old in him, was not something he would want to give up a perfectly lovely Saturday afternoon to go and do. And so he created this model, the Sib Shop, which is really, really focused on what kids love most and that's fun. Um, along with fun activities, recreational activities and games, we um, mix in discussion activities and other kinds of opportunities for kids um, to talk about what it's like to have a brother or sister with special needs. And I, I use the term special needs as a shortcut. It's vastly imperfect, I know, um, but it saves a little time at times. Um, so here you see some pictures of SIB shops. Um, you can see people having a really fun time. Um, you can see in the bottom left kind of what SIB shops have looked like over the past year, like many of our lives have looked like over the past year on Zoom. Um, and, uh, you know, siblings have told us uh, across the board particularly this last year, that they're so grateful to have SIB shops, um, especially being so isolated. You know, kids' schools have been closed and kids have been stuck at home. And we've heard from our, our young siblings that um, they've been really grateful to have that support online. We can go to the next slide. And um, I'm gonna turn it over to Lindsay. Lindsay's gonna talk about some local um, supports. And then if you guys have any more questions about SIB shops, I'm happy to answer them. Um, we do a whole four day training online. Um, if you want to become certified as a SIB shop facilitator, you can check our website. We do them once a month. And we really talk about so many of the issues of why we're here offering SIB shops um, and then kind of the nuts and bolts of how to do that in really effective ways, both online and in person. So if you're curious, go to our website um, for more information on SIB shops and Lindsay, take it away. Yeah, I, I was just going to say that you offer the training, so there might be some participants, and I know that last year, and this was uh, said earlier, that include, along with the Department of Ed, really appreciated this need for giving younger children the support right away when they're younger. They really recognize that sibling support is family support. So there's so many organizations that want to provide family with support, this is a very specific family support. So if you are interested in getting trained and having it, um, certainly reach out to Emily. Um, and speaking of SIB shops in this local area, um, you know, there's some participants on here right now that actually run some of the SIB shops in Manhattan with AHRC. Shout out to you, Caroline. Um, and they run a magnificent SIB shop um, and they have been doing that for I feel like decades. Um, and so there's the information right there in front of you. It says Manhattan Sib Shops at AHRC. Um, I believe all this information is also in the program. So if you're fiddling with your pen, it's in the email that you were given. Um, and I just recently um, spoke to someone who on Long Island, which sometimes Long Island is forgotten a little bit, but the breakthrough ptli.com, they are having SIB shops there and they're doing them virtually. I also know that at AHRC, they're doing them virtually um, as well. So um, you can reach out. Those are specific SIB shop programs. Um, and then, so for younger, the younger population, if you're looking for that, um, as Emily said, you know, the needs as you get older become different. And so, but I do know that when you get that support at a younger age, just like when we think about our children with disabilities and, you know, our students, when they get that early intervention, this is sort of like an early intervention for SIBs. 
Um, and then as, as siblings get older, um, there's support for individual age groups. Now the sibling leadership network, so if you're an adult sib online right now, or even a parent who has adult children, direct them to the sibling leadership network. Because even if you're not from New York, you might find the group within your state. And it's all the information is on there, um, including SIBS New York information. And so in New York State, we have SIBS New York. Um, and we have a Facebook group as well. Uh, we have monthly meetups right now. We're just doing them through Zoom, but we're starting to figure out some socially distant. Some people are now with vaccinations and becoming more comfortable now as the weather is warmer, meeting up but you can um, go to sibsnewyork.org. There's um, my emails on there. You're also receiving my email. You can reach out. Um, I didn't even realize that I would love the support that I was getting when I first joined Sibs New York. I didn't realize, I thought I was just going because, well, I wanted to make sure I would set up you know, Julia's future and keep it going. And I just wanted technical information and I needed help. And I have developed some of the most amazing friendships through SIBS New York. And half the time we're not even really talking about our SIBS, but it's just that SIBS get SIBS. And it's just, you become closer friends because you appreciate um, each other's life stories. I mean, that's what good friends are anyway. And so, um, finding a group of people that just understand stress, certainly through this whole uh, COVID life, um, I felt like a lot of my friends I've made in Sydney, New York is what got me through a lot of that uh, stress. Um, so if you go to the sibsnewyork.org, you'll find specific information there. And then sibling resources. So Sibs New York partnered with the Sibling Leadership Network and um, we created this sort of one-stop shop. It's like Target. You know, you can go in for shoes and a pepper. Uh, go to siblingresources.org and you can, you just find all this specific New York State information. You have the New York State ARC information. You have sibling leadership uh, information. There's actually some self-paced learning um, on there. So it's a one-stop shop uh, resource. Um, and so I think this is a really great start. There's a lot of information right there, but those websites will give you all the information um, and uh, links to reach out to me. You can email me, you can just ask questions. I often get emails from parents. Parents are constantly emailing me saying, I'm really interested in making sure all of my children are getting what they need. Um, and I love it when parents are reaching out because um, there's a lot of support out there for all of your children. And, um, you know, one of the things I like to do is people email me and then I just send them off to call this person, call that person. <laughs> um, and there really is a lot of support out there, including include NYC. Um, they have been a terrific resource uh, for myself. So, um, that's also obviously another great uh, sibling resource. So I think I'd love to turn it over to some specific questions because I think that will be super um, helpful. And uh, yeah. so we've gotten a bunch <laughs> um, <laughs> within the last um, couple of minutes. So I'm gonna try to make sure that we get to as many of them as possible. So I know Emily, someone had, there's someone who lives in Forest Hill, Queens, and they were wondering how to find a SIP shop near them. I know you mentioned that they're being done virtually at this time. If you could please drop that link that you dropped earlier, Emily, I think that would be helpful in case anyone um, is wondering. And now I'm going to go to the Q&A box and just kind of answer them in the order received. So some, so we have Natasha, she has an eight year old daughter with her brother who was five and is in the process of being diagnosed, has some aggressive tendencies, issues of self-regulation, ADHD, anxiety, ODD, et cetera. She wants to know what services are available to her family to help her not feel marginalized, resentful, ignored, but cared for, important and loved. She worries she slips through the cracks given the height maintenance that her younger brother requires for safety purposes. There is no diagnosis and therefore no true services or supports being identified. So she says, please help. 
Yeah, I, I, I think it's a great question. Lindsay, did you want to talk about local or, I mean, I think, I think SIB shops would be a great um, fit for this child. Um, you know, the thing about SIB shops is that um, SIB shops are really, <clears throat> first of all, they're celebrations of the many contributions that siblings make to their families and their communities. And they really are SIB only spaces where siblings can shine. Um, and so we emphasize, you know, in SIB shops, we emphasize a wellness approach. Um, this is not like a, it's not a clinical intervention. It's not therapy group or otherwise. Um, but that's not to say that there aren't therapeutic elements. In fact, many of the young siblings and even parents you talk to, um, uh, you might talk to of uh, parents of kids who, who are in SIB shops, say that there definitely are therapeutic elements. Um, to creating a space for a, a sibling to talk about their experience and to talk about um, the good. There's, there's a lot of good that comes with being a sibling, right? And, and sib shops are certainly a place to talk about the good stuff, um, the not so good stuff, which is really, really hard for many siblings to talk about, especially in a situation like this one where maybe the family doesn't even know what the diagnosis is. You know, like that road to a diagnosis can be long and bumpy and uncertain. And um, if parents don't have a really um, strong sense of um, what kind of information they can share with the young sibling, oftentimes that conversation doesn't happen. And that just leaves the sibling feeling even more confused and isolated because the truth is that a, an entire family experiences a disability, right? It's not just one person or two people. Like it's not just the child and it's not just the child and mom, it's the whole family. And so sib shops can be a really good place to come and ask those questions, to talk about that uncertainty and confusion and maybe frustration. And sib shops are a place where all of those feelings are heard and validated. And as much, I, I do, I talk to a lot of people about siblings. Um, that's like, I spend a lot of time doing that. And I always say, if you remember nothing else that I've said, and if you just want to tune out for the next four days, that's great. I want you to remember one thing. Well, we don't want you to tune out for four days, but just remember this one thing. Siblings want to be heard and validated. And that sounds so simple, but it's so, so powerful. It is such a powerful gift to give to a sibling. And so sib shops are really places where we not only celebrate siblings, but we, we provide that opportunity for them to be heard and validated. And I, I can't say enough about how powerful that is in a context where there are other kids who are going through similar things and the kids learn just as much, if not more from one another than they do from the facilitator. And that's really, I think the beauty of it. And so, you know, I think for this family, a sib shop would be a really, really great place um, to just come and be and question and, and express and, um, and, and be supported. Yeah. And if they're in the New York city area, I would definitely reach out to AHRC, um, with the information that was, um, on the screen previously, which you've been emailed, I would reach out to AHRC. I know there's like some informal SIB groups. Um, you know, you could reach out to teachers too. Um, I know in my school, I run, you know, I'm, I want to be trained as a SIB shop. This was what I was going to do last year because I had an informal just SIB lunch group where SIBs just came and ate lunch together. Um, so schools might have some informal things going on too. So you could reach out to the program as well, but certainly reach out to AHRC. I, I've observed that SIB shop group and it really is, it, it's a wonderful place. <laughs> Yeah, and I can't say enough about the New York City, um, sorry, AHRC, NYC, um, SIB shop. They do an amazing job, Annette and Caroline and their whole mm -hmm. team. It's just, it's magic. And so, and I know they um, support siblings from all over, all five boroughs, I, be, I believe. And yeah, so all five boroughs, yeah. Definitely check them out for sure. Okay, thank you so much to both of you. We have a couple of questions and there are two questions that I'm actually gonna roll into one. So in regards to the, the SIP shops, right? And, and the Facebook group, are they open to individuals who have siblings who are diagnosed with disabilities in, um, outside of DD and IDD? 
So that's that seems to have been a concern earlier um, in the chat. They wanted to know if it's open to people with physical disabilities as well. Um, so if, if, if this can address, talk about SIP shop and you talk about the Facebook group, is it open yes. to people, to siblings, people with all disabilities? Yes, the answer is yes. Um, and, you know, SIB shops, we say, um, <clears throat> SIB shops, it's such a flexible model that, um, you know, SIB shops support a variety of different um, children of, uh, of siblings of children with different disabilities. Because the truth is that the commonalities of the sibling experience greatly outweigh the differences that those different diagnoses may present. Um, and SIB shops are a great place for kids to learn about other disabilities. And so if your whole sibling experience is about having a sibling with autism, for example, and suddenly you meet um, maybe the sibling of someone with cerebral palsy, right, which is um, not cognitive at all, it's a physical, you know, um, disability, the opportunity for those two children to learn from one another's experiences in a SIB shop is really, really powerful. So. Sib shops are, you know, at least the the way we teach it and the way um, the way we uh, suggest organizations offer it is for, you know, kids um, who have brothers and sisters with all kinds of different disabilities. Which isn't to say there are some organizations that you know they just support kids with autism and they only want their sib their sib shop to support the siblings of the family in the families they already support. Um, so it just depends. You kind of have to do your homework a little bit and, and ask around, but I'm pretty sure that the AHRC um, SIB shop supports kids with all kinds of different yeah. things. From what, yes, okay. and the um, SIB shop on Long Island also um, is okay. inclusive of all. And what about the Facebook groups that you guys have? Are those also open as yep. well? Yeah, yes, mm -hmm. all of our supports are for, um, and even, you know, even our, our kids' books, you know, you'll see that they are, written by young, young siblings of, of kids who have different physical and um, intellectual disabilities. Thank and you I will so note much. if there's any parents online, I know a lot of the questions from parents to me have been, you know, the whole social media thing, but I will say that they're monitored so well and they're very safe. Um, you know, Emily and Dawn are moderators on there. So it is a very uh, safe Facebook group. It's not open to just the public, it's very private, um, so it's safe. Okay, I know we've had a couple of guardianship related questions. I see that the Ark of New York, someone from there is in the chat. So they've, they've left a resource for everyone to check out. I just wanted to give a general um, message here. If you have a question in regards to guardianship, you can certainly call Include NYC, our helpline, and we can be able to you towards resources that can be able to help you with that process. Um, next, we have a question from Elizabeth Bellini, and she's saying, hi, Emily, do you recommend that parents involve siblings in the IEP process for their brother or sister with a disability? If so, what are some strategies for families to use? Any specific strategies for teachers to use to encourage the voice of siblings? It's such a great question. Thank you for asking that, Elizabeth. So, you know, yes. So at the Sibling Support Project, we do take the semi-radical stance that um, because we believe that siblings have so much to contribute and so much to offer, and siblings really, we know our brothers and sisters um, in different ways than, than our parents do. And by the way, I didn't say this at the beginning, but um, Pana, I think you mentioned it in my intro, but I'm also a sibling. So I, I live it, I breathe it, I, I walk it, I talk it. Um, and and so we, we really do believe that um, that siblings should certainly be invited, not obligated, but invited, given the choice to participate in things like IEP meetings. And that, you know, for us, we really kind of um, put that under the category of future planning because it is so, so important. You know, if you guys spend three minutes on SibNet, you'll recognize you only need to, it doesn't take long to find a, a few posts about you know, um, the concerns that, that adult siblings have about the future and maybe the not so far future because it's this thing that has always been assumed or expected but never talked about. And so, and it can really cause a lot of challenges and a lot of stress for not only the sibling but for parents, for the person with a disability, if future planning is not a fluid, open, ongoing process that involves the entire family. Because, you know, the truth is that all family members are gonna be involved. 
um, in one way or another. And so um, we really see that it's an opportunity if you do invite um, a sibling to participate in an IEP meeting, um, it's a really great opportunity for that sibling to understand um, the conversations that are happening around transition and you know transition planning, like the sooner the better. Um, it's important that the sibling understands that they have a voice. And so, um, as I said earlier, like we know our brothers and sisters in different ways. Siblings can often speak to the strengths and abilities of their brothers and sisters. Um, because we're contemporaries and maybe we maybe we see that our siblings can do things that um, that maybe parents aren't aware of. And so that's really valuable information to bring to something like an IEP meeting or any kind of planning process. Now, does that mean that we want siblings to be, you know, obligated to attend the IEP meeting? Absolutely not, right? Because we, um, we know that siblings oftentimes um, maybe take on more responsibility than they really need to sometimes. Um, but that being said, what a great what a great way to start to gauge um, how much a sibling wants to be involved and how you can involve a sibling so that their voice is really heard, um, their choices are honored, and um, they're really part of the, that process. And you know, just to add on, um, Emily, you bring up so many great points, you know, there are some siblings that really want to be involved and, and having that information, it's, you know, they're, it's useful for them as a sibling. So I'm a teacher as well. Um, and in this time where we were, you know, remote learning, there were a lot of siblings that sat next to my students. And of course, being a sibling, you know, I'm having private conversations with them about being a sib. Um, and they loved coming to the IEP meetings because it felt like it gave them even more information to be successful with their SIB. So, you know, as Emily stated, it's really a discussion too, and having those open conversations of how much the sibling wants to be involved. But when I was growing up, I loved being involved because it made me learn things that I could help Julia with. So um, it's just a matter of feeling out whether the SIB uh, wants to be involved. But teachers do enjoy that too. <laughs> and you. I think just to add to the specific strategy piece of it really quickly, um, you know, I think it's really simple. I think, first of all, you know, inviting the sibling to participate, if the sibling does wish to participate, explaining to them what this meeting is about. I mean, I think that's helpful for parents sometimes. You know, I've, I've sat in on many IEP meetings uh, professionally, and sometimes um, I, I feel like it's not always clear even to parents. Like, what, what are we doing here? You know, it's not just another meeting to check the boxes and, you know, it's a real discussion about how do we move forward in the best interest, in the best interest of our loved one. Um, so explaining what the purpose of the meeting is to the sibling, and then also like just actively soliciting feedback, you know, like Lindsay, what do you think about that? You know, you know, Julia really well. Um, do you want to add anything to that? So really just like kind of directly addressing the sibling, um, and also I think making it okay for the sibling to say like, yes, this is the role. Like, yes, I, I, I'm able to help with this, but really making it okay for the sibling to say, no, I'm not, I don't feel comfortable doing that. I don't feel like I'm able to, it's just not my thing. Um, establishing those boundaries early is so, so helpful. Thank you so much, Emily and Lindsay. So who I can already past six and the time went really fast so I'm going to if you guys don't mind I'm going to squeeze in one more question and I sincerely apologize to everyone else who had questions that we're not going to be able to have time to get to but I sincerely ask you to please reach out to Emily and Lindsay by email and they'll should they should they're going to be able to answer your questions at that point so our last question is going to be from Dina she has a 10 year old who was in denial that his younger brother who is seven and a half years old on the autism spectrum. He just doesn't understand why he gets certain privileges and their bond is severing. She said it's tearing their family apart. How does she support her oldest son? Where can she begin? I mean, I'm, I'm just gonna throw out the SIB shop thing too and some of those SIB supports. Um, you know, I think, what age did you say he was? He was, seven and a half seven okay. and a half right so I, I just think that you know the sib shops is really where they can hash out those just uh thoughts and 
meeting other kids sometimes it's just hard to sort of talk to your parents you know you it that's a different relationship but when you meet other kids that are going through certain things that um you know is helpful um uh Emily I don't know if you want to jump in also on that but yeah, I mean, thank you, Lindsay. I think obviously sib shops are a great resource. And I think also, you know, when it comes to parents um, uh, trying to support young siblings, I think like a couple of really simple strategies go a long way. And the first is to, again, siblings want to be heard and validated, right? So really, that's all you have to remember from this whole thing heard and validated. And so like, how does that, what does that look like for parents? I think that um, it's really, really important to open the door to conversation because I think that many siblings are hesitant to talk with their parents about those feelings that aren't so great about their brother mm -hmm. or sister for a lot of reasons. First of all, it's not nice, right? Like, you know, the brother or sister doesn't um, didn't choose to have this disability. So there's like some guilt. Guilt is a big thing that we talk about during our four day training. And it's certainly like, you can't talk about siblings without talking about guilt. Um, uh, but, but also, um, to, to just kind of invite or to create that space, um, where siblings can express themselves, can ask questions, and I think it's so, so important um, to set aside special time um, just with the typically developing sibling. And I'm not talking about like whisking them away for a weekend. Like I'm talking about small, consistent gestures and that, you know, mm -hmm. the church supports that, that when it comes to supporting our children, small, consistent gestures are really the way to go. And so maybe it's um, one sibling recently um, on a panel said, you know, for, for me growing up, my parents would let me stay up 20 extra minutes after they put my brother to bed. And it was just my special time with my parents. And we could talk, we could watch a part of a show, we could do a puzzle, you know, whatever it was, it was just my special time. Maybe it's, um, uh, you know, another sibling recently said, uh, during therapy, you know, my mom would um, drive my brother to therapy and I would sit in the car with her and wait for the therapy session to be over. And it was 50 minutes uninterrupted with my mom twice a week. It was great. Um, you hear a lot of sibling stories like that time with their parents is in the car, but you know, it, it's still such precious time. And so um, I think it's, it's a hard situation. I think you're recognizing that the sibling, your typically developing child has some negative feelings about the situation. And, you know, I'm sure you have some negative feelings about the situation too. Like we all do, this is, this is not, no one signs up for this, right? This is not our first choice. And so um, while there may be many gifts and we might now be in the situation of saying, I wouldn't trade my life for anything because I love my kids and I, I love my family and we're just, we're making the best of, um, you know, an uncertain situation. Um, you know, to really acknowledge that the situation is challenging um, and to validate that and to say, you know what, that's okay. And to even model it and to say, um, you know, to, to ask that question, like, you know, what is it like for you? Tell me, what is it like for you to be so-and-so's sibling? Like, what, what is that, what does that feel like for you? And, and maybe it's like, what does that feel like for you today? Because that, you know, it changes, right? We're not, sibling experience is not all good and not all bad. It's like all of the above at any given time. And so I think to just keep checking in with the sibling and to really invite honest, um, honest feelings and, and feedback about their experience and to validate it and to make it okay. And to say, you know what? I get frustrated too sometimes. Like what a great gift for a parent to give to a sibling because, um, until you recognize what's happening for the sibling and validate it, um, it's the sibling is not going to be able to find another, a different, a better way to um, to respond to their situation. Like I think just opening that door is so, so important um, and validate. Like most, and we talk all the time about active listening when we do our trainings. And that's the idea that like kids really don't need you to solve their problems. They don't need you to fix it. They just need to be heard. Like that's what active listening really is all about. You'd be amazed that these kids, if you just 
um, if you just listen and let them talk and be heard, a lot of times they can find their own solutions. They just need that support to know that someone cares enough to listen and they support them and they're with them, you know, and that's, I hope that helps. And, you know, I'm happy to chat more um, offline. Emily, um, I think you should have like a weekly sib chat because you're so eloquent about <laughs> all of the sib stuff. What? I would tune in weekly just to listen to you. Well, thanks. Yes, I would yes. only do it if you joined me, Lindsay. We'll do a podcast, sit and talk. I was, I was just going to yeah. say podcast, the podcast. But you know, because we've had some really amazing questions and I really feel I bad and we have to end. I am glad that you mentioned guilt because that was in, in one of the questions that I wasn't able to get to. And as I mentioned to everyone, I know we had a question about future planning. If you have any questions about that, definitely call our include NYC um, helpline and we'll be able to connect you with some resources. So I just want to thank everybody for joining us today and even spending the extra nine minutes with us. This has been a really um, fantastic experience to be able to hear all of you and to learn from all of you. So thank you and thank you to everyone who attended and have a good, yeah. have a good thank evening. You. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you to include. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Have a great night. Thanks, Em. <laughs>